So hopefully you guys enjoyed our V-mount brake adjustment extravaganza. <laughs> if you did, hold on to your butts because here's part two in our brake adjustment series. And we're gonna talk about the rim brakes for the road bike. Let's get on topic. Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona, and you are watching another great episode of Toolbox Topic. Hopefully it's informative too. <laughs> Joined once again by my co-host, Brandon Van Leuven. Brandon, how the hell are you? Pretty good. Nice, and we're coming to you from the Chuck Bicycle stores of West Phoenix and Goodyear, Arizona, once again, because it's where the cool kids hang out, eh? And me. And again, just to let everybody know, I am not sponsored by Track, okay? I'm actually not sponsored by Track Bike Stores either. They charge me extra. <laughs> It's called asshole tax, just to let you know. So in case you guys are wondering, <laughs> it comes up every once in a while. Um, Brandon and I are really good friends, and I appreciate the fact that he helps me with these videos, and we're able to share them with you. Now, that being said, last week, we did V-mount brake adjustment. Mm -hmm. a deep dive. I hope that was beneficial to you. The link's going to be up top for you guys to watch it in case you missed it. And this week, for part two, we are doing rim brakes. The V-mount brakes are a rim brake, mm -hmm. but this is a different style of rim brake. Yeah. So that way, anybody that has a road bike that's still rocking this style of brakes, maybe you got an older bike, a retro bike, and you're rebuilding it, you guys are going to know what to do. Yeah. So I'm going to let Brandon take it away because mm -hmm. I don't know much about this. <laughs> All right. So uh, just like the V-brakes, three things that are common with these brakes, there's going to be um, a little bit of friction in the lever. The lever's mm -hmm. not being snappy. The rims are making noise when you brake or the brakes are rubbing causing you to slow down you don't want that on a road bike at all no so we're gonna go tackle those things grab that camera all right time for b-roll <laughs> and once again guys we film all these videos at one time okay forgot the cage small rig cage still using the iphone okay for you know the b-roll um but there's no cage and that's okay we're we're gonna make do with what we have so let me get this set up the right way and then brandon's gonna give us a transition three two one yeah all right let's get on it all right so uh the first thing we're gonna tackle is if you have a not very snappy lever and you can feel that a lot of times there will be this this play inside the lever here that's not gonna feel very good or it's gonna take a lot of effort to uh, depress the the lever um, you don't want that. What you want is a nice light action and a very snappy feeling lever. Now, <clears throat> if you saw the one uh, that we did with the townie regarding this, it was very easy to disengage, disengage, to, I don't know, yeah. to take apart that brake um, and get that cable, um, get that cable out of there. Road bike, you're going to be all taped up. It's going to be a little more difficult to do. So I have a little bit of a different approach to lubricating the lines and. Again, if you didn't see that one, typically a lot of times friction is are gonna be our enemy inside these brake lines, especially full length housing, which we don't have here, but we'll show you how to, to get past or get with through that. Um, so with no further ado, I'm gonna get a tool. <laughs> and for this one, what I wanna do is take the cable apart at the pinch. Okay. All brakes have a little bit of a little room giver, I always say. This one has this little cam lever that gives you room to remove the tire if necessary. That's also going to give me some little bit of slack on my cable here for when I take it apart. Okay. So I'm going to come on the other side so you guys okay. can get a really good. So I'm going to remove my cable, at least, at least loosen it up so I can do a couple things. I can remove that out of here, loosen that up, and on this side, you can probably see it from there. I'm going to remove the cable from this stop as well. Okay. This gives me all the flexibility to do that. Okay. Now, without having to work from the lever like I did on the townie, I can work just from these points on the housing. Makes it a whole lot easier. And the same thing like I did before, just a little bit of lubrication on these guys, let it drop in. It'll follow the cable down in there. You'll right. see it just going down there. And again, this is a brand new bike, so I don't have to go too crazy, but um, I'll give a little bit of... You can just work it down there a little bit. Keep yeah. doing that until it feels better. Hopefully that has remedied <laughs> any kind of friction in the line. Um, if you see too much corrosion, if it's not working, if it's rusted out, just go to the bike shop, have them replace all cables and housings at that point. Uh, for the road bike, it's gonna be a little pricier because you're probably gonna need new tape at that point. You're probably gonna need to have someone to do it for you. So a little bit more costly on, on the road bike because of the extra labor involved in taping the bars. 
So quick question, Brandon. Mm -hmm. uh, this little chingadero right here. Yep. Is this always going to be on the non-drive side? Every brake is a little bit different. Sometimes they're not even on this. Okay. Sometimes they're at the brake lever. Okay. <clears throat> for some systems. So not always. Okay. I would not, I would not say that. Okay. Just good to know. It's a question that could I come can't up. Think, I can't think of one offhand anyways. Okay. So <clears throat> same thing with this guy. I, I took this out. I would do the exact same thing on this. This one's a little bit easier to do since you have so much flexibility in the line. You can just um, completely lubricate this whole cable up and down. And then just give that give that housing a little bit of back, okay yeah little bit it, of back it is significantly forward. easier mm -hmm. yep I can replace all this now and reset my cable and hopefully that works for that <clears throat> you know what else hopefully works oh man like subscribe bell notification icon if you guys are getting some enjoyment <laughs> notice how I said enjoyment and not necessarily knowledge okay <laughs> so we know sometimes we're a handful. Um, so again, uh, tightening on your brake cable, it does not have to be extremely, you don't have to go ham on it. You just have to right. distort, just have to um, kind of deform the cable a little bit and that's completely effective right there. After you replace that, go ahead and check out your line, see how it feels. And I'm gonna pretend that it feels 100% better. That's great. Yay. <laughs> so, all right, so that's getting the friction out of the line. Now hopefully you have a nice snappy feel with the lever. Everything feels nice and smooth and nice and light. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is brake squeal. Now this is a aluminum machined rim. If you have painted rims, you're probably going to have squeal no matter, you know, it's going to be difficult to get that squeal out of there. Right. A lot of times some of the, um, like the more lifestyle bikes, the fixie bikes, the single speed bikes, the, the city bikes, they have painted rims for looks and they, you know, they look nice, but they, it really is not a great braking surface. What you really want is a machined aluminum braking surface like the one we see here. Um, a little bit of uh, alcohol and a clean rag. Uh, we use that 90% uh, isopropyl alcohol. I was going to say, make times, sure you're specific. I don't want yeah, anybody wasting good yeah, bourbon on their friggin' just, uh, uh, their just, rims. Uh, cleaning off the rim will get a lot of stuff off. And then also you, what you want to do is inspect the pads themselves as well. Um, you want to look for any metal in the pads. A lot of times metal gets embedded in there. You can pick that out. Um, or also if they're look glazy, you can just get a file. Um, I use a cheap wood, any file, wood file, metal file. Just file it down to a new surface and that helps a lot. Of times now we well. talked about the file in the last video. <clears throat> what if someone has like maybe uh, an 80 or a uh, hundred sand grade sandpaper, sandpaper. Sandpaper okay. works great and, and as well. Just yep. clarify for everybody. Yep, absolutely. So if we're still getting squeal, what we need to do now is introduce what we call brake toe. So ideally what you want is for that pad to hit the rim square. That's gonna give you the most power and the best feel at the lever. But if we're really trying to get some squeal, if it really is an issue, we're gonna introduce what we call toe, in which the brake pad, if this is my rim, will contact first in the front and then to the back. And a lot of times that will help quiet down the brake. The way I do that is, this is my technique, is I'll get a little piece of uh, cardboard or a little piece of trash right. and I'll fold it up a couple yeah. times. You guys might remember this from the last video. And I'm gonna trade spots with you. Yep. And what you can do is place that right behind the pad. And this is gonna be exaggerated, guys, so you can see. But if I put that behind the pad, squeeze the pad, open and close the bolt and squeeze it. When it comes back, it'll be adjusted for a little bit of toe. So now that's actually a decent one because you can see it, oh, yeah. it engages there and then the backside comes yep. down in there. So it hits and then the backside comes in. So that's a better demonstration of introducing a little bit of toe um, than the last one. And if you need more, you can double up. Just you can manipulate this however much you need to do. Right. The key here is a little bit of patience, a little bit of practice. Um, it may not be ideal. I think the last one was way too much. So I would have gone back and, and redone it for a little less toe. Than the right. last one, but it did good for demonstration, demonstration purposes. purposes demonstration yeah. Purposes. So that's introducing toe, and hopefully that will eliminate any squeal. Clean rims, clean pads, a little bit of toe. Hopefully your squeal's gone. Okay. The next re big reason why people come in is because their brakes are rubbing, and of course on a road bike we don't want that unless you want some really good resistance training. It's not a spin so, class. <laughs> so here's the thing I see the most. So a lot of times there's two types of road calipers. There's um, single piston. Uh, single piston. There's a uh, single pivot ones um, or single mount and then there's uh, dual mount ones. This is a single 
um, single mount. Now, how do you know if you have a single or a dual mount? You'll see there'll be two bolts on either side. Okay. Uh, on this side. And to be quite honest, they're called something that's totally eluding me right now. So I'm just calling them single with double mounts because <laughs> I can't remember what they're called. If Brandon so, can remember it, I'll put it in the description, guys. Oh my God. So here's the biggest thing I see with the single mount here okay. is that the brake has been adjusted correctly, but maybe we've gone on a car trip. Maybe it's been bumped around a little bit. And these things, because they only have one mounting point, get pushed over to the side. Right. Now our brakes are rubbing. Oh, yeah. So I get to be a little bit of smart ass once in a while. People come in, my brakes are rubbing, and I go like this. I go, and, and you're done. There you go. That'll be 10 bucks. I don't charge 10 bucks, <laughs> really. But they say, oh, was that it? Yeah. Wait a minute. You charge me $10. <laughs> <laughs> but that will be your first troubleshoot. If you have these kind of brakes, just make sure that um, they haven't been pushed over by putting it, throwing it in the car, kids knocking the bike over, things like that. And then just double check, verify that the, the pads hit squarely after you're done. Because you can go too far, and in which case you have gone too far, you can manipulate these back and forth any way you want to. Right. Um, if it's really loose, what did you want to do is get your five millimeter, go to the back, this back nut, and just tighten it down even more. Okay. But this happens all the time. These things that get bumped, they're gonna go out of whack very easily by doing that. Okay. So provided that that is not the case, what we're gonna to wanna to do then is double check our spacing by using actual <laughs> the actual method intended. Okay. I'm gonna grab a couple tools I should have done before. Well. So on this one, I'm gonna inspect the pads both front and back. And this one is, these are kinda of not as easy to do in my opinion as would be the, um, the other pads. On the on the townie, okay. Um, you can either squeeze them through here and take a look at how they're how they're hitting. The main focus is going to be I want these pads to be mirror images of themselves. Right. So I'm going to set one up. If I'm satisfied with the way that one looks, I'm going to mirror image that one to the other side. So these actually, after I mess with that one, they actually need a little bit of adjustment. So um, I'm going to swap with you one more time. All right. No Sorry. worries. And what I want to do is take a look at them. Um, you see that one's got some toe in it, maybe on purpose. This one's got a little less toe. I'm going to try to set these up the way I want to set them up um, fresh. And what I will, how I'll do that is squeeze the, um, squeeze the lever so that the pads stay in place. And now what I'll do is center up that pad where I want it. Snug it up a bit. And these guys might be a little bit of a problem because you can see as I tighten, it toes Turns. itself. Yep. Which could be a couple things. It could be these little concave and convex washers in here, which you can spin. Or it could be sometimes these aren't the best brakes. So maybe the arms are just a little bit, um, just a little bit cockeyed. Right. And that could be a reason for it as well. But there's nothing wrong with a little bit of toe on there. Again, just so you understand what, what's happening here. Sometimes also, these concave and con convex washers, they're very soft, and so they develop grooves in them. So when, as you tighten them, they settle back into those grooves. So by spinning these around a little bit and getting them into a new position, they'll find hopefully a new home. And you'll know that if every time you tighten it up, it moves the exact same way, you're like, damn it, what's going on here? A lot of times doing that will, will solve that issue. Gotcha. So I'm going to, See what happens here. I'm going to put this where I want. Nice and centered on the rim, nice and flat. Snug this up. And you can see it is moving out again. So it could be just that this brake is not the super accurate brake. So a little bit of toe there. I can't quite see if they're, if they're just about. There we go. I want to make sure it's centered up in, in the rim and then also it's hitting as flat as possible. And then you can always hold that and then retighten it up, yeah? Correct. Just to get it yep. to stop that rotation. Yep. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. And then really, the only way to really see if you're doing a nice job is kick, put this thing in a stand, throw the bike up, and then what you want to do is look at it dead straight on. Yep. I'm going to get in front of you again, sorry. No. Nope. So I want to look, make sure that these pads are, when they're in, when they're hitting. So I can see here, this one's a little bit lower. So I'm gonna adjust this guy. 
And it might take a few times, guys. You know, just a little bit of patience. So that looks, I'm looking at this cross section straight on. Yep. And I want that to be a straight line through both of them, if that makes sense. So I'm going to snug that up. I'm going to get and back now, here, guys, so you to can see that them, it's pretty <laughs> right on the money. You don't want to tighten them um, without holding on to the pad. What I always do is I always give a little pressure to the front or the back of the pad, excuse me. And then I move it a little bit. If you were to move this without holding onto the pad, it's gonna rotate the pad and everything. Right. So I'm gonna snug that up. Same thing on this side, hold onto the pad. Snug that up, and I'm gonna test. I'm gonna take a look where I'm at. How do we look from over there? Is one I pad think you're looking pretty other? good, man. Okay. All right, I can't quite see. Um, so now what I wanna do is, these are hitting pretty square. As I, when, I, when I say square, um, they're pretty centered up right now. Yep. But if they were not centered up, some of these have these in different spots. Um, some of them are very complicated. Some require Allen wrenches. <laughs> um, this one is a very easy adjustment right here. Okay. Here's my centering screw. If I go either way, it's gonna start moving that caliper in and out like that. Nice. So that's that one. Uh, some of the Tektra ones are a little more complex um, where you have to actually find the screw that's embedded inside there. So, don't don't take this for granted. Yours might be very very different. There's a lot of ways to center up ca road calipers, um, but this is probably the easiest way. So look for that screw first. Awesome. If not, you probably have to go to a manual or something like that. So on this one also, uh, we don't have that noodle that we use for um, for the brake throw. How much you want to feel? So you can either do it a couple ways. You can adjust by cinching up the cable in the pinch bolt there and you know, kind of guessing how far you got. This one has a barrel adjuster right embedded in the, uh, in the caliper arm there. So if I wanna match how my front brake is feeling, I can just go with my barrel adjuster and barrel in and out as desired. Okay. To where I want it to be. That's nice, that's easy, it's so, convenient. Yep, yep, I like it for that quite a bit. Um, so I either barrel or tighten this, this cable up to match what the front's feeling like. Front brake has the same thing, barrel adjuster and the same pinch bolt, so. And that's all I got to say about that. All right, well, let's transition back to the main camera, okay. Brandon, take us away. Three, two, one. Well, there you have it, my friends. That was our comprehensive version of rim brake adjustment for road bikes with the single mounting point, not the dual mounting point. <laughs> Hopefully Brandon's gonna try to remember what they're actually called, and then he's gonna text me, sure. and then I'm gonna have it in a little banner right here that that's what they're called. That was improvised. <laughs> it happens sometimes. You guys know how we roll. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully you guys learned something from the video. All right. And at this point, we're going to ask you like, subscribe, bell notification icon. Once again, if you made it this far, we love you. Thank you so much for the support. But by doing that, you'll help out the channel. You'll help out the video. There's going to be some links down below to Chuck Bicycle Stores of West Phoenix. If you have any questions about this video, any of the other videos, please follow the link, give Brandon or one of his team members a call. He's not always gonna answer the phone, so. <laughs> but they're happy to help, seriously, unless it's me, and then they just like, they'll hang up on me. Just, you know. They, See the caller ID? Yeah, they're gonna like, yeah, put me on hold. And just, oh, sorry, we, we disconnected you, Thomas. No, I'm joking, guys. They're a really good bunch. So they'll answer all your questions. The other links are gonna be for our social media, The Devil's Work, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. But we need to get the word out about Get Out Arizona. And we have group hikes and we have group rides. And Brandon, if I remember correctly, you guys have been doing some group classes here on the weekends too, yeah? Uh, here and there? Here and there. Yep. Okay. We're trying to do it every like quarterly. Okay, quarterly. <laughs> well, I'll have Brandon keep me posted on that. And then I will keep you guys posted on that. So if you're local, you can swing on in and enjoy those as well. Other links below, affiliate links, qualifying purchase, doesn't cost you anything, gives us a small commission. Helps out with gas money, park passes, and coffee money, the other trifecta we love so much. Brandon, anything else you want to add before we close this out? Nah, I think we're pretty close. Pretty good? Yeah. All right, my <laughs> friends. What do we say at this point? Be kind to yourself and others. Be amazing stewards out on that trail. And we have to ask, what are you waiting for? Get out, Arizona. That's right. My friends, we'll see you on that next adventure. Take care, everybody. Brandon, we'll see you next week, man. Okay.